What's up, folks? It's your boy Rico the Plug with the Rap Hustle.com. I wanted to get on here and talk about further on this Kendrick Lamar drink beef, right? Um I got a warning for these podcasters out here. Um you know our uh culture when it comes to hip hop, battling is a part of the culture and uh it's all competition and it's all about fun and seeing who has the most lyrical prowess when it comes to this thing, right? And we know this battle has been epic for the most 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 part. And it seems like it's been one-sided, you know what I'm saying? Um when it comes to the outcome of it. But let's not forget that as people that are in the public eye, we have a responsibility to make sure that we are careful about the things that we do and say and the way that we report things to the masses. Now, I know a lot of people have their favorites in this thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, Before it started, even after it started, most of you have maybe been converted to something new, you know, to favor one over the other. And that's cool enough. But what I'm seeing from a lot of these podcasters that don't like the outcome of this battle is a lot of vitriol, a lot of disdain for Kendrick Lamar and also the fans who feel like Kendrick won. I don't understand why so many of y'all are taking this so hard. I mean, this was a competition for the masses, you know what I'm saying? We all see what's going on with it. We all understand what has become of it. But what we need to understand is just like Boosie and uh, a lot of other celebrities who've been in this game for years and seen beef go down the wrong avenue, we have to be careful in how we are reporting these things and how we are spewing out the words that we're saying about things because we live in a time and day where there's a lot of super fans out here a lot of super fans thanks to the internet it's a lot of super fans out here and when you're doing podcasts and you're pretty much like a voice for people who draw to you some people believe everything that you say and hang on to everything that you say some people understand that it's your opinion you know what i'm saying you can agree to disagree but we have to understand that it's a lot of young people watching these things right and not only that it's a lot of emotions that are being drawn out from the outcome of this. And I don't really understand why grown men and women, because I'm not gonna, but I haven't seen many women get on the bandwagon of trying to destroy one or the other because they don't like the outcome. But I have been seeing a lot of these so-called voices in podcasts these big names in podcasts and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh spare no names academics more to be you know for the front forefront of this you know what i'm saying um you know joe budden does his thing but for the most part joe budden just keeps it biased you know what i'm saying he gives good points on both ends. You know what I'm saying? He speaks good of both of the guys at the end of the day. But academics and more, y'all have a responsibility to pay attention to the way that you 
carry yourself in front of these cameras and on these screens and uh it's not really looking good it's not really looking good um for some reason you guys are taking this loss personally and you're coming up with narratives and things like that to try to destroy a man's character just because he is probably came out victorious over the person who you favored the most in this situation um i remember when it was going on and i was watching the reactions to these you know what i'm saying of these folks um i found a lot of it hilarious i sure did i found a, a lot of it hilarious the way that they was taking it because and i'm gonna tell you the reason why i found it hilarious because for years they may have not paid attention to the skill level that Kendrick Lamar has. And a lot of us who have, we already knew going into this battle that Drake doesn't stand a chance with Kendrick. But because these cats favor more pop rap than they do real rap, and now the guy who they favor the most has been humiliated. I mean, come on, man, he's been humiliated. They feel like they've been humiliated. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I don't know if anybody else is seeing what I see, but to me, it looks like they feel like they are the ones who lost. I mean, come on. Every other day, academics got a new play, a new way to say something different to try to discredit Kendrick Lamar and big up Drake. And you know what I'm saying? They're trying to switch the narratives and make it seem like, okay, if they're not saying that nobody won, it's not over, or Kendrick didn't win because Drake is a better rapper. Um, I don't know if y'all seeing what the rest of the world is seeing, but it's pretty much a landslide victory. You hating on the numbers of the song, like I myself will probably play Not Like Us at least two times a day. And it's not because of what he's saying about Drake, per se. Um, it's just a great song. And, you know, it is what it is. It's a great song. No matter how you try to break it down or try to discredit it, you have to understand the masses have already spoke. Kendrick won. Kendrick is winning. If you don't feel like it's over with, Kendrick is winning by a landslide. If it was a basketball game, Kendrick is up 50 points in the fourth quarter. Do you know any basketball team that could come back that's down 50 points in the fourth corner with three minutes left in the game. <laughs> it's over with, fam. But y'all don't want to accept the fact that Kendrick Lamar just might be a better artist than the guy that you favor. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with coming to the realization that the person who you thought was really something, and come on, let's not get it wrong. There's a lot of artists out here that cannot rock with Drake, cannot hold a candle to Drake when it comes to making music. He makes good music. But in this sport of hip hop, You have to know and understand that this is a lyrical field. This is all about who has the better lyrics, the most impact, and the crowd. 
you can go against the grain all you want to and keep trying to make up whatever kind of commentary you can make up to make yourself feel better about the loss, but it's a loss. Face it, it's a loss. But what I don't understand is why y'all, why y'all so, why y'all acting like you lost? Why you acting like you was humiliated? Maybe you was because of the commentary that you was putting into it before Kendrick answered. We get it. Y'all didn't know what Kendrick was capable of. So y'all was like, oh, it's going to be a good when Our guy Drake is going to come through, kill everybody. Oh, it's 20 versus one. Drake's going to kill everybody. And that didn't happen. The most go-to line that a lot of you podcasters and uh, even the fans who really are holding on to Drake winning, most of you guys always say, Family Matter was the better verse. Push-ups was the better song. Let me break this down for y'all. My opinion, and this is my opinion, throughout this battle, on Drake's songs, push up, he wasted a lot of energy focused on everybody around the situation except for his main opponent, Kendrick. He said some slick lines, but they didn't add up to anything. One of the lines that y'all held on to, and uh, I think it was the push-up song, is when this man said, how the, how the hell you big stepping with a size seven shoe on? Oh, y'all love that line. Ah, oh, he got small feet. Ah, oh, he beating his wife. But let's count up the points. Let's just be honest, okay? Let's take away the the, the bars that he wasted on Rick Ross and everybody else and focus on the bars that he had for Kendrick Lamar. They were lightweight, fam. If we was to weigh him up and put him on a workbench, a workout bench, his bars was probably like... 10 pound bars. I'm going to give him 10. I'm just giving him that because I don't want to discredit Drake for his greatness. But I'm going to give him 10 pounds of pressure on his bars. What was his key things? Kendrick had small feet. He was beating his wife. His wife got a baby by day free. I can't think of nothing else that he said about the man that would make you really feel like he really did some damage to Kendrick Lamar. So let's debunk these things. You said that Drake, baby mama, was uh, had a baby by his manager. That turned out to be a lie. Fabricated. You said that, I didn't mean Drake, Kendrick. Kendrick was beating on his wife. We we don't know that to be true. Could be another fabrication if we got to weigh out everything else that we know about you. It was a lie. Probably the only thing that was real that you said is that he has a size seven shoe but you question his ability to do some big stepping in those size seven shoes. And let's be honest, you probably got size seven shoe prints all over your body right now. So he answered your question. You asked him, how the hell does he big stepping with a size seven shoe on? And he showed you. 
But now the OV Ho fans, I'm gonna go there with it. I gotta go there with it. I'm a K Dot fan from before this. I'm a K Dot fan from 2010. I knew what he was capable of. Maybe y'all didn't pay attention to K Dot. Cool. Oh, academics. You don't like to hear Kendrick Lamar rapping about the black plight. You're a colonizer too. Let's think about it. You moved to the United States in 2000, which means that you haven't even been here for 25 years. Hip hop was started in the 70s. How could anybody take anything that you say serious when it comes to hip hop? How could you become the authority of hip hop? And you're not even from here yourself. You're from Jamaica, fam. You don't even really know the fund fundamental rules of hip hop, the keeping it real, the, the expression of self. You don't even know those rules. It's obvious that you don't because we have all these reference tracks and all these verses that was regurgitated by Drake coming out. Almost every song that he has, he either has somebody else write it for him or he has took somebody else's lyrics word for word, put it over a different beat, said it a different way. None of that adds up to keeping it real, being authentic as yourself. But here y'all are trying to brainwash the culture into believing that Drake been running the hip hop game for 15 years. Drake has been running hip hop for 15 years. Let's separate it. Come on, separate it. Learn the difference, fam. That is hip hop. Like most Def said, you're going to hear that when you're shot. Was that most Def? You're going to hear that when you're shopping. You're going to hear that at Target. You might hear that on the elevator. And it's cool. Nothing wrong with that. We in a day and age where hip hop was taken over by the corporation. So, of course, they want this music playing everywhere. Of course, they're going to put it everywhere. But this ain't where hip hop came from. So the true essence of hip hop is keeping it real, being yourself. And when it comes to the battle, it's all about who got humiliated the worst. And your boy got humiliated the worst. Okay, we can't say that Drake is a PDF file. But we can say that Drake has had suspect moments throughout his career with young women under the age of 16. And he was well over 20 years old himself. I don't know how to get down in Jamaica. I don't know. Maybe they don't see nothing wrong with that. Cool. What else did Kendrick say? The man was a colonizer. He said the man was a colonizer and he broke down and made people look at it in his lens. Wait a minute. That's true. You do hop on everybody else's way. You did go to Atlanta and did music with everybody. Everybody who was popping, who was new and popping, you went to Atlanta and did music with them. Then you still a guy from St. Louis style and try to act like it's yours. Nobody else in hip hop has went through 
that many changes of appearance throughout their career. Granted, it's been 15 years, cool your hair grows and all that. But in the essence of keeping it real, I don't know no other guy that's over 30 years old that's going to put barrettes and shit in their hair, except for uh, Sauce Walker. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But that's his style. And then I came across a video of Sauce Walker dissing Drake in 2015 about going to H-Town and trying to colonize H-Town. Then you got interviews with Soldier Boy talking about how Drake took his whole swag. Then you got videos of him taking music from TLC. Uh, he's rapping TLC lyrics over rap beats. That's an easy way to hide them lyrics. He even had a whole Aaliyah verse. So it can be said that he is a colonizer. Um, what else did Drake Kendrick say about this guy? That he was a hater. He really despises black culture. It's showing right now. After the Rick Ross situation. Everything that Kendrick said about him is starting to look real. Everything that Drake said about him, we don't see it. So we have to face the facts, man. Kendrick came out the victor in this. And I don't remember when. I don't even remember y'all saying the things that y'all saying about Kendrick. Like when it came to Drake, like when this battle first jumped off after the like that line, after the like that verse, and Drake came out with the diss, boom. And then he dropped another one, boom. And y'all was like, oh, Kendrick's on the clock. He's on the clock. Oh, y'all was super excited. Kendrick's on the clock. What are you going to do? I don't think he got nothing. Y'all was taunting the man, telling him that he wasn't good enough to even compete with Drake. Then he came out. Put the foo fops on that boy. When he made Push-ups, drop, 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 drop. Y'all was drop, 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 drop. Now, after Kendrick didn't wop, 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 wop his ass, y'all talking about stop, 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 stop. No. You don't get the convenience of saying that he needs to stop doing what he's doing. Now, y'all sound like supremacists. Like, you have the right to say that this man don't deserve to celebrate his victory the way he wants to and put the pressure down the way he wants to. Yo, guy started this. Because he's emotional. And you guys are starting to see, I'm starting to see why a lot of y'all are Drake fans. Because y'all are emotional. Just like him. And it's cool. We need to separate the lanes from the real. But what I want y'all to understand is that the way y'all spewing all this hate for Kendrick, there's super fans out here that will get themselves hurt, put in a position where they can't feed their families and stuff like that because they're listening to y'all and then they're going at people with the vitriol that you guys are going at Kendrick with. Now, I'm going to give Maul some props. Uh, apparently, they did a, a Rory and Maul podcast and they wanted to, you know, talk about the breakdown of the Kendrick Lamar video, but even though he had a uneasy look on his face, he didn't really want to say much about the video. And that's cool. He's like, oh, wait, now what's next? What's next? What's next? Well, what's next is
we're going to keep rocking with Kendrick. You know, every time you hear Kendrick, you're going to have that look on your face. You're looking like drag. We're looking at that party, fam. And it's funny. It's funny because it was like the bully in school getting beat up by the little dude, the dude with the size seven shoes, the big bully. How the fuck you big stepping with some size seven shoes on? Well, let me show you. Wop, 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 wop. Matter of fact, wop, 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 wop. I ain't finna show you no respect, nigga. Might give you a little respect if you get that ring back. We know you ain't finna get that ring back, so you don't get no respect, fam. I tried to respect you, but you disrespected yourself by being emotional, by being in your fucking feelings. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I want to warn y'all podcasters that's on Drake's side that's trying that y'all best to find out how y'all could switch this narrative around. It's not going to happen, fam. What's going to end up happening is you're going to end up losing a lot of viewers. Ma. It's a lot of viewers that just seen that last antic. And even though you didn't say much, it was written all over your face. And you made your podcast dry. Now you look like a wounded female. Like your boyfriend got beat up and you don't want to talk to nobody. And he got beat up because of you. That's how y'all looking. Y'all looking like y'all boyfriend got beat up because of y'all running y'all mouth. And now y'all trying to, well, well, he did, he did, he did scratch him before he, uh, you know what I'm saying, before he got molly wiped, he did get his nick in, he did, you know, he stole on him, no. Don't matter, he got his ass whooped, respectfully. <laughs> but I want y'all to know and understand that y'all got a responsibility, man, to carry yourselves with integrity, fam. Y'all ain't showing no integrity, man. Even in basketball, man, when LeBron James loses, man, he don't walk off the court and don't want to shake nobody's hand and all that type of stuff, man. You win some and you lose some. You just got a big loss on this one, fam. And the antics that you, that Drake was doing, and not only Drake, the Drake supporters, the Y'all making it look even worse. Y'all making y'all whooping your own ass right now. And don't even understand it. I think y'all should learn how to take this one in pride and stride. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, give Kendrick his props and leave it at that. And let's move forward. Y'all dragging it on by talking about people getting tired of hearing it. No, you're getting tired of hearing it. I know people that's playing it every day. This is a good thing for hip hop because for the last 10, 15 years, nobody has had music outside of Drake that was being played every day. Nobody, not just Kendrick Lamar, nobody. And not even Drake's music is being played every day. Drake's music get played when people are in the mood for whatever song they're playing for Drake. Other than that, I've been seeing a lot of underground people coming up in the game because people are fishing for new music from different places. They're not going to one artist for music. Y'all act like everybody get up every day and just listen to Drake. Just look, I honestly have never listened to a full Drake project. I only listen to Drake if it comes on on the radio. I have never personally went and played any of his music Post signing to Cash Money. Before he signed to Cash Money, I was rocking with Drake. Because I'm a guy who believes in independence, I was rocking with Drake and I was hoping that he didn't sign to the industry. When he signed to the industry, I quit rocking with him. Even when Kendrick signed, I didn't quit rocking with Kendrick. But I didn't really pay him that much attention because I really don't like the antics that the industry is doing with our culture. I don't like the six nines and the all this dumb stuff that they put out here to our people. Like it's a lot 
of hot artists out here in this world that deserve to be in these spotlights that they got all this dumbed down music in. Drake's music is appealing, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't really represent the culture, which is why Kendrick said, I'm what the culture is feeling. If you're not feeling Kendrick, you might not be a part of the culture. And it's cool. That's why they got different genres. They got pop, they got rock, they got classical, they got jazz, they got EDM. There's all types of genres of music. I need y'all to understand one thing. Rap is a genre of music. Hip hop is the culture that rap came from. Get that through y'all mind when y'all keep saying Drake was running hip hop. No, nobody that is of the culture of hip hop would say that. Most death is a hip hop. To live quietly, hip hop. Jay Z, hip hop. They embody what hip hop is all about. Being true to themselves. J. Cole is hip hop. And one thing I want y'all to understand, not like us, is not a racist attack on Drake. It's not about you not being black. It's about you not being from the culture you have not had to endure what we endure over here in these states and i'm not saying toronto don't have their own set of problems with police and stuff like that what i'm saying is drake didn't go through that drake was raised in one of the richest areas in toronto did he go to Memphis? Yeah, he been to Memphis. Did he hang out in the streets of Memphis? Was he involved in any shootouts? Did he, you know, go to the parties in Memphis with his cousins and get into some gangbang action, pulled over by the police, pulled out the car, hands down? You know, none of that. He didn't have to endure any of that, in my opinion, for what I know about Drake. Drake from Degrassi. There's plenty of videos of Drake doing interviews before he got to this point where he's telling you about his life growing up Jewish. Feeling like he didn't fit in because everybody else was a white Jew and he was the only black Jew around him. Rap about that. That's being true to yourself. Taking everybody else's music, transform, transform it into you, your sound, and then beating your chest, act like you better than everybody over here who's really being themselves. Academics. Kendrick is himself. That's why we love him. He came from Compton, but he ain't out here acting like he's a big gangbanger. He ain't out here acting like he put in work with people. But guess what? You can't live in an area like Compton and grow up around the people that he grew up around and not have been in the middle of some shit. I heard that clown ass, dirty ass cop Reggie say, 
Kendrick can't be the king of the West because he wasn't in a gang. Boy, shut your ass up and sit down somewhere, fat boy. You the biggest vulture of hip hop. I don't give a fuck if you was with Suge Knight. You was a police officer, fam. I think you had something to do with Pac being killed, nigga. Let's really talk about it, fam. That's another story, man. I'm sick of these cats that's ruining our culture with this dumb shit. This stupid shit. Even the glorification of the gang culture within this rap hip hop culture. And even though it was gangs in this hip hop culture, that's not something that we should keep putting out there, especially when we look around and we see everything that's going on with these young cats out here, man. When hip hop started, we didn't have no millionaires and billionaires, bro. We got millionaires and billionaires now, man. Let's start teaching these young cats something different. If not, we're just a problem ourselves. That's all I got to say. It's your boy Rico the Plug, the rap hustle.com. If you're an artist, model, entrepreneur, or if you just like hip hop, man, and you want to support this channel and support the platform, make sure you sign up for the rap hustle.com, create you a hustler's profile page, and let's hustle together. If you on this, hey man, I need y'all to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell so you can get notifications. When we drop more content, I got some some interviews coming up from some hot up and coming artists from down south. They go on a tour called uh, We Outside Tour. You know what I'm saying? Um, Breadwinner Kang, PDE Pluto. These are artists. They dope what they do from their area, man. And we're here to support that. Um, so I need y'all to sign up, subscribe. And you know what I'm saying? Participate in what's going on over here. Because over here at the Rap Hustle, it's not just about talking. It's about action and doing something different and better. I'm not telling nobody to stop doing what they're doing. But our niche is to help catapult those artists who really do need to be in that spotlight. We need to even the playing field. Or else we're going to continue to keep getting sexy reds and all this dumb shit, six nines and all this shit being pushed by these culture vultures, these corporate culture vultures that are trying to control the narrative of hip hop by having people like Drake in our face to where we got people like academic and them talking about he's the greatest artist of hip hop, greatest of all time. Come on, man. He's not even hip hop. Face it. He's not hip hop, bro. He's hip pop. He's hip and popular. He's not hip hop, bro. Church.